Check, check, check. One, two, one, two. Hello, everybody out there. This is Brian from the Be Shine, and this is the Be Shine Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest straight out of Brooklyn. We have the native. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this always happens. Does it? <laughs> like when you record and you've recorded a line that you're, you got perfect every time. And then you keep like fumbling on a specific word that you never did before. But you yeah. have to retake it like 30 times in the studio. See, this, this you should keep in. I might. In fact, if I could start from here. Roll, roll, no? I mean, we sure, got sure. I am many in the place, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the backseat driver. Yeah, going yeah. On. <laughs> I was trying to think of a way to talk about how like, um, a way to phrase you're one of the more like down to earth, like true school New Yorkers. Mm. So that's how I. Now I'm it. a now I'm a a Lindener. Is that a thing? A Linden? And now I'm in Jersey. I'm a Jer- yeah Jerseyan. Jersey, yeah, they, New Jerseyan. I, is, like- is that what they do? Is that how they say? I think it? so. Okay. How do you like living in New Jersey? Uh for me, I I like it better. Bay Ridge. I grew up in Bay Ridge, so my whole life. So for me, when you're from a place, your whole life. Um, and other people, like everyone knows your shit. You know what I'm saying? They know my business. I fucking, it's, you know, and I lived on the, like the recent apartment that I left from, I lived on the avenue. So you got like bad traffic and uh, motherfuckers outside. There was a hookah bar downstairs. So now I step out the house, there's trees, you know, which is nice. And I can go up two blocks, you know, and then there's, city again yeah nice and quiet i got a garage shit like this to me you know it's like yeah man i was in jersey city working in new york for eight years straight and then i finally moved out but i i always knew that i was going to come back to like a more quiet area yeah where there's like peace and quiet and space and parking parking's a big one the um the pandemic just sped it up a couple years yeah so Oh, that was a dope ass spot. Thanks, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, Is your routine different now that you live in Jersey than New York? Because you have to adapt to all the different like spots you're used to going and what you're accustomed to, and even the people that you know. Or is it just kind of same as usual? You found your gym to go to, and you know the, the restaurants you like. Well, I've always been very in my own world. So for me, honestly, like when you when you adhere to a strict regimen, you really don't matter where you place me. Like I'm not looking to hang out. <laughs> I'm not looking to make new friends. Yeah. So what like what do I I don't know. I'm I'm not a ah, it's weird. I I maybe I've done so much living, you know what I mean, in my in the younger days or whatever, then I'm like I don't care. Like, I'm going to get up. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to work. I'm going to get home. Like, and I'm just very routine. So it's like, I could do this shit anywhere. Yeah. In Brooklyn. I, but, but Brooklyn is, it's it's just, uh, New York, there's too much bullshit with, with, with New York where it's just like, I don't, I don't know if I'd want to go back. You know? I don't know what, what what it takes for it to be worth it to be in New York. I don't know if it's like, extraordinary amounts of money in which it's not beneficial for you because the taxes are crazy. Um, Restrictions on investments. There's all sorts of things that makes New York not appealing. And that's why everyone's leaving. You were thinking that before you left, you're like, is it even worth it to stay here? It was like, when I started talking about mandatory vaccines and shit like that, I was like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. It's like, (laughs) this is, you know what I'm saying? Like this stupid, silly bullshit. One of those things, right, which is jump into the controversy immediately. Like one of those things was you have like, look, if I got to go to Africa, right? And they're like, look, when you go there, you're going to get this, this, and this, Mm -hmm. right? This is going to happen. So I'm going to, like, I don't want that shit. I don't want monkey pox. Like this is going to prevent me from getting monkey pox, Okay, sign me up. Yeah. Let's get that. You know, let's, I'll take all the vaccines. I don't want to catch all this shit because I'm another part of the world. So, but if you want me to take something that's not going to prevent me, prevent me from catching something that if I catch, it's probably not even a big deal. 
It's not preventing me from getting it. It's not preventing me from spreading it. The fuck are we doing again? Why am I? What? Oh, it's like uh, it's like making a mandatory flu shot, pretty much. Because I, yeah. I haven't taken the flu shot, and I mean, up until COVID, it was a couple of years. I was just like, I'm not going to take the flu shot because why? Whatever. But so now it's kind of it's kind of like that because it's lessened. Everyone that I know who we get the flu shot got the flu. <laughs> I didn't get the flu. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get the flu shot. So that, that was, the, that was like the, that was it for me when it came down to like mandatory vaccines. I'm not, I'm not volunteering for the fucking slave state. Like for me that I was hard on that shit where a man has to draw the line to where you say, this is what I don't budge on. This is what I stand for. And if I got to die for this, then, then that's what it is. My thing was, I'm not living the slave life. You're not going to come grab me and, ma- and inject some shit. And you might you do it. I'm going to be dead. And you do whatever you want at that point. But it's <laughs> not, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I would go wherever the hell I have to, to get the fuck away from that shit. Because I don't. You know what I mean? I ain't down with that, which is weird because you know what's you know what's funny? When I when I was in Brooklyn and I was a kid in Brooklyn, right? Now here I am, I'm an artist, but in my mind, what I imagine an artist to be is something like a liberal, uh artsy, glasses, mm-hmm. maybe like a sweater and then like the you know, artsy like kind of fucking person. And and I always attached open-mindedness, but an op- a rebellious open-mindedness to, the, to my image of what an artist was, you know? So you think like this, I don't know, free-spirited, open-minded, rebellious person. You, it was quite something when you realize, whoa, these are the first people to get the fucking line. These are the first people that are volunteering to conform. They don't even have to be forced. They're the first in line. Sign me up. They're doing the work for the fucking, the, the, you know, slave masters, if you will. So they, you know, that was like a real eye opener where it was just like, this is weird. Like, how is it that the people Like that, you know, is someone born in New York, you you imagine the people from the South and Pennsylvania, you know, the old cliches like, well, you know, well, go get the barn and, uh, you know, all this bullshit. But it's like, no, these are the motherfuckers that are really awake. These are the motherfuckers that are like, no, you're not. I don't trust you. I know your, your, your shadiness with the banks. I know your shadiness with the government. I know all of it. Like, this is why I'm keeping my gun. I don't trust you. Right. That's open-mindedness. That's rebellion. Existing outside of the line, so to speak, right, would, would come with some kind of enlightenment and like, the, the, like these were the people that were aware. And it, it, it was just surprising that it was like, no, this, these are the first motherfuckers to fall asleep. Like New York was like the easiest, that was like the slave state. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like these, all these other, the, these other guys, you know, on the quote unquote right, however you want to label them. And there's wackos on both sides. But these are the people that seem to be, I don't know, like a little bit in touch with fucking reality where everybody else is like going off the deep end. To the point that when somebody says something that's just normal reality, it's now considered bravery. Like somebody comes up and says, no, there's really a such thing as a biological man and a biological woman. And they're brave. This is how fucked up we are. It's like me coming out and going, uh, you know, two plus two is four. And now like. I'm a fucking hero. That's scary. How far removed from truth are we that when somebody comes out and speaks basic, irrefutable, fundamental facts about something that has never been 
questionable ever. These are the new heroes of today. <laughs> it, it, you know. What, what's an example of what you're talking about? I mean, you could say like an Andrew Tate. I, I, I haven't seen much of him. It comes across my feed. Um, Matt Walsh, you know, who made it like his okay. thing to like attack the, I don't know, not attack, attack, but challenge the, the, the whole transgender thing. Okay. Uh, you know, even Candace, like anybody, I shouldn't say even Candace, Candace, anybody who ch- they're challenging sheer insanity. And I want to clarify. Is a, I grew up in, in, in the club scene, New York City club scene. It's filled with like, you know, the, uh, drag queens like did the guest list. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not... I'm no stranger to, to fucking gay culture. I was in it like every weekend. It was in the tunnel. I was in sound fact. I lived in these places. Um, do I think that there are biological males who feel like women who then make, really make a sacrifice to essentially become a woman to, to the, whatever degree that they can possibly do that? Yeah, I believe that. Do I think that the other thing happens in reverse as well, where it's a a, a biological female who feels like a man, does everything in her power to get as close to that as she possibly can? Yeah, I believe that. Where we really start to go off the fucking rails is when we say there's no such thing as any of it, therefore I could choose to be all of it. (laughs) And this is where we, we start to get into... If you remove, if you remove sense and you remove rationality and you remove logic, all that's left for is do, it it, it allows for a space of do what I say because I say or else, because we're no longer able to go, hey, but that don't make sense. Because now we're going to say, oh, well, making sense is racism or this is how wacky shit gets. You know what I'm saying? And we've gotten to these places. And I, you know, it's just fascinating that it's like, you know, today's heroes are just people like, it's easy to be a hero today. It don't take much. The world has gone so fucking wacky that if you just state reality, it's like you're rebellious. Yeah, you basically, you speak facts and then you defend it. Yeah. Like a, yeah. Like, a jo- <laughs> like a Jordan Peterson yeah. or a Ben Shapiro like that and they get hated a lot sure for their opinions but the more you the more I watch the more I agree with them actually one of the biggest things that they get criticized on is it's not so much like what they're saying but it's how they're saying it that makes people uneasy and it's like why they're so in their feelings that they like oh he said it in an aggressive tone so I don't really like that yeah yeah That's yeah, a yeah. Big there, thing. there is that well see peterson Peterson's probably one of the finest minds, you know, of, of our time, right? He, he belo- he's up there in my, like, with every great thinker and philosopher and psychologist in, in history, you know. Um, Shapiro, though, yeah, the, he's speaking facts at times. Shapiro has lived a very, what, what appears to be, a very sheltered life. Like, this is a man who, like, he plays the violin. Like, he grew up and went to, like, like, you could just tell that there's certain things that it's like, he was giving an example where it was, like, something about they're asking black people if black people are overweight because they make bad food choices or if the system was designed that way. And then he gives an example of going, look, there's a Whole Foods in Harlem. It's like, no, 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 no. Like, Harlem is not what you think it used. It's not the same Harlem. Right, like he doesn't have the life experience despite how many studies he's read and how much he knows about economics. You're wording it so much better than me. That's exactly (laughs) what it is, where it's just like you're very, like, life is not, doesn't just come in a fucking study. Like, and that's what I get from him, where, you know, Candace is more... Um, she has the life experience and she has her, her position and what she believes in, you know, but, you know, 
even with her sometimes. And, you know, this is somebody who, if I'm watching stuff, I'm, I'm going to be classified more right. I mean, I don't know who the fuck, you got to be so extreme, I think, to be classified left today. So I don't know if being classified right's even saying much. I would just support anything that's like truth and factual because you're labeling yourself one or the other. Nobody fits into everything on exactly. So, but wait, the thing is, is like and also you give people a reason to categorize you or judge you by saying like oh, you're I'm one more. of these two things. And yeah. the problem is with saying you're one of these two things is that when you do that, it's like you're supposed to now agree with all of these different things because mm-hmm. that's the the interest of this particular party. And then what happens is is they they kind of hold on where it's like, yo. Candace, like, they're racist in Long Island. Like, it's what it is. Like, they are. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were racist. I mean, Bay Ridge ain't what it used to be, but they were fucking racist. Like, Mm -hmm. the cops would single me out. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, 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 the shit is real. And it's not to say that she's saying that there's not, that racism doesn't exist, but... I feel like they talk it. You got the you got one side talking it up to a the the left where it's just like you fucking idiot. Like you're 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 exposing like you're 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 what you're doing is so stupid and see through. It's failing miserably. Like that. Like everything's racism with these people. But then you have the right that seems to not accept the degree to which it does kind of exist. You know and. So you you have that, like that dynamic, but um, but I think today that yeah, like you're you're in, unless you're really extre- like you're gonna find yourself on the right or the center to right because I think the left has just become it just seems like it's it's just out of control extreme, and I don't know who you know the way that the way that it's. Dividing people is just like uh, incredibly uh, scary. Yeah, because it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be like oh, it's like you you hear oh you're a, you know you're a Republican. I automatically hate you. It's like people think it think like that these days. I think it's becoming more cooler to be Republican. <laughs> you know, I remember I got nothing but fucking hate because I was watching a lot of the right wing people, and I was like. Oh shit, I like, like, it was like, I like these, I like the shit these motherfuckers have to say. It was eye opening for me where I didn't have anyone on the left that it was for me. It was like, <laughs> it was nobody. Like, I, they weren't saying anything that it was like really connecting with me. But as you see what happened, like, it, it was like you get all of this hate and then it's like slowly but surely, it's like people start to adapt and they start to move to that and they see what it is, what it is. Nobody likes Joe Biden, right? Nobody, like, it was crazy to me that there was people that, like, wanted to vote for Joe. Like, I was like, what? Like, you know what I'm saying? But I I do. I mean, I do and I don't because everybody gets their information from different sources and they have different perspectives. So you can be like, how can people think that this is good when these are the facts and it's because of what they're digesting, but you're like, they're, they lived in my neighborhood and they think so differently from me. So it's just what, it's just what the machine is feeding them and, and, you know, the audiences to different, different media outlets. So I would understand why people love Trump. I would understand why people like Biden sure, or Hillary it's just because oh. it's a perspective that people is where they get their information from. It's hard for me to understand how you can like Biden. That's tough. I mean, that's tough. I mean, I don't know. The, the, here's a man who's senile. The man's senile. He was going senile before, like, as this was taking place. Originally, I thought Yang Originally, I like Yang. I like that idea of universal basic income, right? I don't know if I would like it so much anymore, but it just seemed like a good idea. Maybe I just wanted that check every month. I don't know. But I was down with him and, you know, his shit didn't work out and his things unfolded. And I was watching, when it was was Trump versus Hillary. God, 
How do you like it? Like certain shit to me is just weird. Even if you're on that other side, how do you like Hillary? <laughs> how do you like Hillary and Biden? Who are you fucking people kidding me? Like if you're, if you're down with Bernie, you're down with Yang. Okay. No doubt. Mm-hmm. I might not vote Bernie, but I get it. You're, I mean, you're assuming that people have the same amount of knowledge on a topic that you do. And they just don't. Some people just look at headlines and that's all they know about anything. I'm not that knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Like, I just, I see, like, I just, maybe I, all right, maybe to a certain degree I am where I am a little bit more knowledgeable on how, like, fucking sick the Clintons are. And you're right. Maybe these people aren't aware of that. You know? How, though? I, that's what I don't understand. Like, because, <sighs> because Fox News will never tell them. You know, stuff like that. Oh, Fox News will tell No, I'm saying how fucked up the Clintons are. Fox will tell them. CNN. Oh, you mean who they're they're watching. Right. Whoever they're watching hasn't told them. Right. Right. It's just, I've I've just accepted. You're correct. People just don't know a lot of things. uh, But then the thing is that they don't want to know. Like, that's the thing, too. So, and that personality trait presents itself in various, uh, in various things. The only thing this is doing is bringing me to argue with people on Facebook. But that's what it's doing, which is the worst place to argue because nobody's there to be like, let me let me come here to learn something new and potentially change my perspective. You'll never make a point, make your point the way you think you can. Yeah. And you're just going to make enemies doing that. I've stopped doing that years ago, talking on Facebook with people. Yeah. It's, Cause it, it just doesn't feel good either. I'm like, I, I don't like doing this. I don't know. I'm trying to like prove a point and now it's just getting nasty and like, I'm in a bad mood the rest of the day. Yeah. So I just, I just don't even engage with people at all. Yeah. Yeah. I stopped going on. It, it, it just, but, and, and I stopped and I started getting into other things, but it's an interesting personality trait where, you know, you take crypto, for example, which I'm heavily involved in and have been for a while. And I realized that I realized that I'm early and I realized it's something a lot of people don't know about. And even those that are involved in it don't quite, they are still off on a lot of shit themselves. So, and then there's the people that are on the outside. And the funniest thing about it is that it'll be the person on the outside who literally knows, admittedly, knows nothing about it, but can speak with like the most confidence and certainty like against it. I mean, that's, that's, that's fascinating. It's like, you don't know about it, but you have decided that it's not good to invest in. That's, that's just crazy to me. So it's just like, well, they have some sort of agenda maybe, um, for why they wouldn't want people to invest in it. Yeah. Like, so when it comes to the higher ups, when it comes to the banker, the bank types, uh, the banker guys, they, um, Sure, they can have some invested interest, you know what I mean? It, it's not beneficial, you know, but, but like, I just mean like the outside person where it's just like, I had somebody tell me once, uh, oh, that's, that's what poor people do. Put like, put your money into real companies. Oh, instead of crypto. instead. Of- <laughs> yeah. It's like, there's no shortage of billionaires that are deeply invested in crypto. It's like, you're, you're off incredibly off, but you can say that with no, like, just freely, like, and you could have just costed somebody a fortune that would have been willing to invest because investing is tricky. It's very easy. You, you get a piece of information, gets in your head. It, it, it confirms a fear you have. Now you decide not to, to make that move. You know what I'm saying? Which is another thing. It's like, you have to consider the best piece of advice I think I got from Wes Watson was um, when, when, when somebody gives advice, ask yourself, do you want to be like them? Mm. You know, if, so, if, if someone's out of shape and they come to me in the gym and they say, hey, you should do it this way. I should then ask them, will I look like you if I take your advice? <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's like, it's the same thing. It's like, I, I don't... It, it, I don't need a broke person. Not there's anything wrong with being broke, but I don't need someone who hasn't accumulated riches from investing 
telling me what I should or should not invest in. When I first uh, put some money into crypto, um, I had a friend of mine who had been doing it a lot longer and he sent me all these like YouTube channels of sources that he trusted to say like these, these few are like really good ones Mm -hmm. that I like their updates. They're pretty legit. So I followed, I don't know, like five or six different YouTube accounts of these um, Bitcoin and crypto uh, personalities. Yeah. And then I started like getting in my, in my feed, in my YouTube feed, it's all this like clickbait shit. It's yeah. like, not that they were like yeah, not yeah, yeah, good, yeah. but it's all like, what's happening to Ethereum? This is what you need to do right now in like all caps. And like every single day, there's some new explosion of some shit that's, that just came out that you have to like, you know, watch their video and, and take a look at. And yeah. They'll be like driving in their car with their cell phone video, just talking about, oh, today this is what happened, but this is what I think is going to happen. And it just like, it just got me like pissed off that I was like, I don't want to watch this shit anymore because it's not like, it's not like a consistent, like normal level of information that I can digest. Like, I don't want to always like wake up with some all caps, you know, 10 exclamation marks, do this. I'm like, let's just be, let it be normal news. Yeah. And there's some, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that shit out there and you, like, you got to know where to, um, and the thing is, is like, so when, when I, I got into crypto, like kind of like backwards. And what I mean by that is that uh, there was a friend of mine. He was on Facebook's name is Anthony F- Francesca. And he would post these things about stocks, you know, and, and, he, and, and, and crypto. And I realized I was like, it's, it's got two likes. I was like, nobody cares. <laughs> I got to hit him up <laughs> for that reason. Because nobody cared. Cause so, 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 so my thinking is he must be on to something because in my mind, I'm like, when it comes to getting rich, nobody gives a fuck. Mm-hmm. People want to argue about like what politician and like who the fuck is, you know what I mean? Who's right and who's wrong. Like I have my opinions about shit. I could be dead ass wrong, but at the end of the day, I'm not getting paid for my opinions. That's why I stopped watching Candace and I stopped watching Ben, not because I don't like them or I don't agree with a lot of what they're saying, but it, it, it was just one of these things where it's just like, what can I take away from this that's enriching my life? Nothing. Like every time I tune into you people, I get more fucking annoyed about the world. But yet when I'm not really tuned into you guys, I, I'm not really encountering this. You know what I'm saying? Like I might see a gay pride shopping bag or some shit, which I don't give a shit one way or the other, but I seem to keep... And and, and, the only time I keep hearing about these things that annoy me is when I tune in. So I realize, like, I got to hit him up because nobody seems to give a shit about this. And when I hit him up, he told me about XRP. No, he's telling me about these things. A lot of them was stock. But when he told me about XRP and XLM, I was like, now that that sounds interesting. So I got into crypto interested in XRP. Now, at the time when I got into crypto... XRP was the bastard child of crypto. So the, the, the sentiment was something like this. Bitcoin is going to free us from the financial tyranny, right? Imposed by banks and governments, right? Bitcoin, like this anarchist movement. Ethereum is the thing that has use case. It, you can build on it and it, you know, smart contracts and it like, this is, and it was like those two things. Now there was Bitcoin maximalist that didn't even like Ethereum. Like everything's got to be Bitcoin, but more than anything, everybody hated XRP. They had this idea, okay. right? So they had this idea that XRP was centralized. Okay. Um, a big thing in crypto is it being decentralized. Mm-hmm. It's not supposed to be one central authority that right. has control. Right. So they had the misconception that the XRP asset was <clears throat> controlled by Ripple, when in fact, Ripple uses it in their business. It's, it's XRP settles payments, the remittance portion of a payment, the settlement. But Ripple uses that, right? So Ripple provides something called on-demand liquidity, and they work with banks to make payments and settlement instantaneous, right? Like sending an email. Ripple holds a lot of XRP, but they don't control the technology that is the XRP ledger. 
So people have this misconception that because they hold a lot of XRP, they control it, or they operate majority of the nodes and, and the validators and all well, it is shit. They don't, okay? It would be equivalent to like saying Michael Saylor has a bunch of Bitcoin, so he, it's centralized, you know, it's... So here I am, I'm watching all of this XRP stuff, right? Like constant, like every fucking day, like like just hours and hours and hours and hours. And it takes a while to understand it. So I don't blame people for not knowing because this is the back end elements of banking, the plumbing. Like I can walk into a bank and talk to like the highest person there and educate them on like payments mm. because this is how much fucking time I devoted to this. But it, it, I say that to say that this is not common knowledge. This is not like people don't know about this shit. This asset was not meant for retail investors. So I'm watching all of this shit, right? All this information. Uh, just every fucking day, hours and hours and hours. Then I would get to like the biggest channel there was, at least in America, BitBoy Crypto. And I heard him talk about XRP. And I was like, what the fuck? By the way, he does that clickbait shit that I was talking about does he? too. <laughs> he I, I heard him talk off. about, right? And he got it wrong. <laughs> so, I said, what the fuck? Now, mind you, I'm coming from a, most people get into Bitcoin and then they go down the list. I came in backwards. I came in interested in the asset that everybody hates. Okay. So, so here, like, so he's speaking bad and he's and I'm like, he's got that wrong. But I'm like, Jesus Christ, you got a million followers. How the fuck you just, you just really, we're just going to get something wrong. Right? If that's okay. And I realized that this was happening all over the space. Why? Because if you do not follow one specific project, you cannot possibly absorb everything. You have to really, you got to really dig deep into something. So it takes time for you to become like, acclimated and have an understanding of these different projects and what they do. I could explain Bitcoin. I could explain Ethereum. I could explain XRP, but this took time. So if you're spending your time in Bitcoin and you're spending your time in Ethereum, only thing you're going to know of XRP is what you hear floating around on crypto Twitter. You know what I'm saying? So you're not, you, you, you don't, you haven't did a deep dive into that technology. So that's all crypto is just software. It's, you know, that's supposed to do something. And a lot of it does come absolutely nothing. It's shit. It's just quick get rich schemes, right? Rug pulls and shit. So the interesting thing was, oh, okay. Like, it seems like now eventually BitBoy would, uh, would catch on. And now he's like a strong proponent of XRP. He would learn and, and kudos to him. So I, I, I follow his channel. But what, I, what, it, what it showed me was, holy fuck, we're so goddamn fucking early that the people in the know are still getting it wrong. And to realize what an immense opportunity that is. There's not much complexity, right, to, to, to stocks. They're shares of a company. Mm -hmm. So there, there's one or two things that generally move, that move the market. For the most part, it's speculation and news. Okay. Now you can say utility wins the day. You can say that, you know, the companies that are really doing something or solving a problem will win in the long run. Okay, fine. So we, but for the most part, when it comes to volatility in the market, so let's go with the utility, right? Okay, what's what's Apple's earnings? What products are they coming out with? What, you know, what are they going to? What are they going to buy? Who are they merging? Like 
there's things that you can gauge. You can understand where this company's going. There's various factors, right? It's not that complicated. Walk up to somebody and tell them, explain to me proof of work, which is, you know, what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is a proof of work system. Or walk up to them and say, explain to me smart contracts, proof of stake, proof of consensus. This is this gets very geeked out. Real tech nerd geek shit. <laughs> right, which I've never been, but I've watched so fucking much of it. You've become, that, yeah. For the <laughs> compared to the average person, and I'm, I can tell you, like I, I, I you sit me down with, with 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 the real deal, and I'm just going to shut the fuck up and try to absorb as much as I can. Right, you know what I'm saying? I I know a lot for somebody who knows shit. Okay, <laughs> but me compared to your average person, right. a, a, like a, I'll probably look like a fucking guru. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's the, so, so, so between the, the, the stock market and the crypto market, it's, it's really different because you're dealing with specific technologies that are, that are cutting edge and innovative and that are shaping the, where the future is going. A stock is a share of a company. You know, it's so much more simplified. It's just like, what do we think this company is going to do? How are they going to do? And what laws are going to be passed? Is there going to be like a fucking carbon tax? Oh, yeah. OK, let's invest in electric vehicles. And let's that's kind of that's more the stock market game. Yeah. When I was in uh, high school, uh, Iverson just came out with his with his Reebok shoes, mm -hmm. classic Iversons with the tip, the colored tip. And I invested like, uh, I don't know, it was like a thousand dollars or something like that. And like right, right when they came out and then Reebok stock dropped and I was like, oh. and Iverson right was like, when they came out, see that's, yeah, yeah, Iverson was really was bad. popular. I was like, this can't go, this can't go bad because it's Iverson and now he has a sneaker and then Reebok stock dropped. So did it, so what probably happened was, do you recall if whether it was already up when you put your money in? I can't, no, I don't know. Okay. So, cause, cause the way it generally works is. Yeah. It's it's called buy the sell the buy the rumor sell the news I think is the term where it's when that news came out that was the time to buy and then probably a day before they were released would have been the time to sell yeah it might have been too late <laughs> yeah right generally and that's a common pattern it's just really interesting to me where it's just like people would they want to be right more than they want to be correct, if that makes any sense. Meaning that rather than walk away from the exchange with new knowledge, now you're walking away correct. You were wrong when you came into it. You would rather reject the information so that you can walk away feeling like you're right. Oh, so it's not about learning or anything. It's just looking like you're not wrong. Yeah, feeling because it's not it's about winning for them. So if 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 they learned something from me or they, they had to abandon because people sometimes they attach their position, like their ego is attached to what they think yeah. they know or don't know. They gotta be right. And hey, like, as if they're getting something like you're not gonna make money from that. Like I why wouldn't you just learn and like make an investment? Like uh, you think you're right in the conversation? Like, all right, whatever. You know, and you you You'd be surprised where motherfuckers are very egotistical about the way they feel about. Yeah, people are hard headed. People are narcissistic. All the, there's a lot of people that when I think about that stuff, I'm like, there could there would never be world peace. Why are people even thinking about it? Like the amount of personalities that we have in this world that are so cutthroat, like that could never ever happen. People have this wish. That's the same thing with this whole. Um, uh, the abortion law, the Roe versus Wade, mm -hmm. and they're bringing it down to the state level now. And everyone's like, you know, what about our rights? It's my body, my choice. And this and that, and they're up in arms and they're protesting and this and that. And I'm, and I'm thinking in my head, like, when has this world ever been fair? Right. And <laughs> so where is this expectation coming from that things should be fair when it never has ever been that way? 
a breakthrough moment for me was where I once was watching Gary V talking and he was giving an example. I think somebody wanted to start some kind of weed company and it wasn't legal in their state. And this was more, this was the early days. It was like, a, this is a nice raw Gary V. Mm. You know, this wasn't the refined yeah. Gary. Yeah. And he was like, move dick. He said this to somebody. Yeah. And that shit was like, because it was just like, who the fuck told you that things got to work to accommodate your fucking needs? Mm. And furthermore, who said that you like you, uh, you think that you, ah, I, I don't know. Like there's so much of that mentality of like, you know, if, you know, they don't want to pay us and get it, work somewhere else. Guess good news. You don't now, the situation's a little bit different. Oh, I can't afford to leave the job. There's circumstances that, you know, but for the most part, it's just like, you make these decisions in your life. Like if you want to start some shit and you want to get rich, but you're held and you're not, well, you have to leave this, that like, you're not in Russia where it's just like, yeah. you know, I don't know what the fucking laws are in Russia, but I <laughs> doubt you can start a weed dispensary. I don't know. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? You're not in some state where it's just like, you know, I think, what is it, like Dubai? Like you can't show public affection or some shit like that. Saudi you know, Arabia. Jail, Saudi, yeah. one of these places. You're not living in those places. And that was like a breakthrough moment for me because it was just like, yo, you really are like in charge of your shit. Like who the fuck told you? Like- you know, I don't know. It, I'm tr- it, it really just like opened my 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 mind where it's just like, yeah, you don't you waiting for shit to be like. Well, if you're if you're like just watching the news all the time and you're seeing stuff about like, oh, the the gap between the rich and the poor, the middle class is shrinking and yeah. the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Like that is a constant story in the news. But if you're really out here starting businesses and trying ideas, you realize, and with the uh, help of the internet, you realize it's easier to make money now than ever. And it's oh, easier to become a millionaire now than ever. But if you're just on the news, you're like, oh my God, like, you know, we're not going to make as much money because inflation and the rich are just going to keep getting richer. And then there's no, there's no hope. Well, yeah. And that's the, and that's a good thing with the whole fairness thing where people think that, People have, and, and this is one thing I always hated about, like, the, the, the politicians that are like, we're for the poor. That's the most disgusting fucking statement I think I've ever heard in my life. You're for the, let me tell you something. If you're for the fucking poor, you would teach them financial literacy so they wouldn't be fucking poor. That's how you, you help the poor. You, you teach them how not to be poor. You don't <laughs> fucking keep them in that situation or do nothing so that they rise. But, but we just like make the bottom a little bit more comfortable for you. Take, take, yeah. some, take some more of that government cheese or this assistance so we can make the bottom a little more comfortable. No, no, no. You got to get the fuck out of poverty. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and that's that thing. They're like the whole fairness thing. You're waiting for shit to get, for the odds to stack in your favor. Mm -hmm. They're not going to stack in your favor. I take all of my money and I leave myself broke every fucking day again and again and again. Do you know how fucking after a while tiring that is? Where you're like, you don't buy a new pair of sneakers because you're literally like, you're taking every dot in this market that's falling and while people are panicking, you're like seeing big red flashing sale signs. You know what I'm saying? So you're taking everything and putting it in and putting it in and putting it in. You know what I'm saying? Leaving yourself broke. I, I fucking, it's like a bill's due. Oh, fuck. I got to come up with the money to pay the bill. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? That kind of sacrifice. Are you willing to do that? If you're not willing to do that then, I mean, you get what you get. It's not fucking comfortable, but this is the sacrifice. Are you willing to not eat what the fuck you want? You know, are you willing to fucking go through the music industry or fucking be on this goddamn, uh, however many uh, 
the uh, fucking platform. I'm going to learn this platform and I'm going to fucking do this and they're running all this bullshit, whatever it takes to be a successful artist these days. You know, you got to be willing to do that. You can't be like, why don't they make Instagram better? <laughs> like, who the fuck? Like, like, and, and, and that's like the, that's that idea of like, oh, but like my, I can't start the weed dispensary in my state because my state don't allow it. You're like, I wish they'd bring more people to Instagram because they make fucking song. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, it, it, it's it. If Instagram is dead, go to wherever the fuck else you're supposed to go to start the career. I, I don't know what that is anymore. I have an idea, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can't complain till somebody helps you. I mean, if the if the politicians aren't doing anything about Poverty, what makes you think the next president is going to do something? They don't want you to get rich. Like if you right. get rich, you're, you're competing, you're coming for their spot essentially. Like, or like they might want you to get like, when you achieve wealth, you become a threat to the system. People get this idea, like they talk about Illuminati and this idea that all they did, like the government doesn't like wealthy people. People get this shit all backwards. They think like you join the secret society, like operates within the government and that's how you get wealthy. Well, it's not even just wealth. It's people that have a big voice too. That don't necessarily have to be wealthy. It could be a big voice, sure. But the thing is, imagine a big voice and, and, and the money behind it. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, so the thing, like, that's the thing. Like you, you want to get wealthy to get the fuck out of this system. Uh, you, from the beginning, they fucked you. <laughs> like, they, they told you, because, like, you grew up thinking that, like, okay, I'm going to follow the, the path that, that they provided that has been laid out here, and then, like, this is how I'll be okay. They fucked you. Like the not okay, like it's a bad deal, bad deal. Like your 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 majority. I hope you find something you like doing. If you find something you like doing and you're getting money, you won. But if you don't like what you're doing, fuck. Because majority of your life is going to be spent doing that to get this goddamn paper in the future, whatever it's going to be, all right, a stable coin, whatever the fuck, it's a bad deal. Hours of your life. And then the idea is, oh, well, you know, when I'm, I think they even raised it now. I think it's like 67 or 70. When I'm 70, I'll get to retire. Really? I thought it was uh, 65. I think they raised it to 67. So it's like 40 years doing something you hate to have like 20 years of mediocrity. And those are not good. And those not great years, by the way. <laughs> like, like those are not, like we're not, you're not going to Cancun no. at 67. No, you're just, you're staying home resting. You know, you can't have, and everybody can't be rich. Who's going to work, right? So it goes back to the fair thing. It can't be fair. You have to, you know, it, you, you do the best that you can do. Mm-hmm. You know, if it, I have never, I'll work for somebody if I admire them. Because now I'll accept you as a mentor and I want to learn from you. But if I look at you and I, and I, and, and I see in, in, in so many different ways, I hold myself in a higher regard than I hold you. And now I'm supposed to do what you tell me. Nah, something about that don't feel right inside of me. I don't like that dynamic. I never did. You know what I'm saying? It was always fucking the worst part of my life. I'm who I am, right? I have certain standards, right? Like, I realized that anytime I had some kind of hate in my life or some kind of jealousy, it was because I, I, I wanted to be that thing. I, I, I would hate the guy that was in shape. I wanted to be him, you know? Like, oh, the guy with the money. Oh, I'm not into that. No, you are into it, but it just seems so far away. It seems so far from you that it's easier to tell yourself, oh, I don't care about that. You know, when, when, when you start to accept the truths that, no, I do want to be a rich, ripped 
motherfucker with like, you know, as Wes puts it, r- ripped rich and rare. When you begin to accept it, I, and then here's the, here's the real kicker. Here's the beauty of it. When you realize, oh, I can. That's the shit that gives me goosebumps. Oh, I can do that. And that's what a lot of like these people, these great people, these, these motivational speakers, you know, Gary V, uh, you know, even Cardone, you know, uh, he's more money based with, but, you know, but uh, Wes, uh, Patrick, Bet, David, all of these Ooh, guys, that. you know, that, 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 that bring forth this message of, 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 you know, and I was even, I was even drawn to that message. I think before them, I forget, you know, who it was, but this, I've, I was always born with this idea that I could do something with my life. I could make something happen. If you do not accept responsibility for, for the conditions of your life, you are then admittedly, you're, you're saying then I can't change it. Cause I, if you're not, how can you change it? If you, right, like if, if I didn't give myself, uh, right, like it's not me that's cutting myself, okay? I can't stop cutting myself, <laughs> right? But if you, once you realize I'm here because of me, uh, either in, in action, man, I used to look, I used to look at it, 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 it Wes and I'd be like, that's a fucking motherfucker like he he doesn't fail like he's always fucking hitting it and it's just me and i I, it's just like god i seem to get it but i i I fall and it's like you keep falling and falling and uh, going through it and falling and until one day you know like it just clicks and 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 there is a change that happens and it's for me it wasn't working out i wanted to work out fine but then when you when you truly commit you change like you uh i used to have a thing with the masturbation i was i was into porn you know and that that was a hard one uh, no pun intended like fucking but like that was like you you couldn't get like it was, that was one of the harder things to walk away from and as i started to really just be like ah, the truth is I want to put all my money into crypto and I want to work out like almost every day if I can. And you just start doing that and doing that and doing that. And you know what? I'm not even going to drink alcohol. I never had a problem with alcohol, but it's just like, get this the fuck out of here too. It is not helping me my, for my purpose, right? Even though it's not a problem for me. And I don't have a, you know, but it's, it's not assisting me in my goal, right? So fuck this thing too. Let's get this the fuck out of here. So now what you're doing is, is, is the mind is starting to, you are becoming, you're rewiring yourself. Now the desire for the porn is not, it's not even there. Where now it's just like, oh, I'm really going to do this. I'm like, I feel like doing this. Like, you yeah, know, why? I go get the oil. Fucking, <laughs> it's like, I'm going to do that. Like, why? I don't even want to bother. So you, you just rewire, like you, you change. You You change. You have to really want it, though. And not everybody can put themselves in that level of motivation. I can do it, but it's hard for me to do it for, like, a long period of time. Like, I can do the veganism. I did it for, like, a seven-month stretch. Mm -hmm. And then I went traveling and wanted to eat all their local food. Mm -hmm. But I can get into working out, like, Mm -hmm. five, six days a week for like two months straight and then like maybe I'll get sick and then I'll fall off for a couple of weeks. But for me to do that, I can, so I can definitely like get in my, get in my zone and not have any sugar or any carbs, eat right and work out six days a week for like months, like two months. And then, but it's hard for me to do that for a year straight. So well, that's, that's one of my shortfall shortcomings. I think that for me, it, it, it started, it started to get to a point where when I was going to the gym, well, well, here's the thing too. I'm an addict, you know, and I haven't, when I come from a family of addicts, but my addictions were not your typical addictions. I didn't really have drug addiction. I had like sick, you know, the video about the acid trip, it kept me away from like the drugs and shit. Yeah. But I got healthy an, addictions you have. I, I, I went into a, a real sick gambling thing. 
Okay. That's you know, I got into a gambling thing. If left by myself, I will become like very sex craves, uh, crazed. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Where I will start, like the pleasures will wipe the floor with me. The, the, the pleasure seeking <laughs> and chasing. Like I, uh, they have a strong hold over me and they'll, 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 like I will, if left to my, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's why like, Sometimes when I'm around family, it's just like, I'll be the one that's ordering the thing that no one else is ordering. And it's just like, I think sometimes that they think it's like, I don't do this because I like to do this. But it's just like, if, if I was you, if I behaved like you people, I would destroy all of you. I would be the fattest motherfucker here by far. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to take it to the next level. You're like, I'll do anything better than you. Yeah, like even <laughs> destruction. Because that's that addictive tendency. Yeah. And that's why the addict is has the ability to excel. But that is we're, we're, we're obsessed. But that ad- addiction trait that you have, an obsession is part of like your work, your fitness too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's now pushed towards healthy things, but it like with the crypto, that's not normal. It's not normal to spend, spend, spend like in, in like everything, leave yeah. yourself short. But I have like in my head, like, 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 Oh, I, I like, it's extreme. Like, yes, I'm going to lose. Oh, I better, or, or I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss. But now imagine when you pursue just anything with that level of intensity. Oh, fuck, I better, I better, I better, I better. That's why motherfuckers excel at abnormal rates. It's like, you know what the funny thing is? Anytime you, I, I'll meet somebody, they'll say, oh, but you can have it once in a while. Do you, do you live by that? Do you have it once in a while? Usually now. Yeah, I'm looking at them like it don't look like you're having the slice of pizza once in a while. You know what I'm saying? I question, uh, what's the validity of moderation? I think moderation's a fucking myth. You know what I'm saying? Maybe in some rare cases, like, you know, but, uh, and that's not moderation. I'd say that's occasion. So like, oh, I have a drink on an occasion, Mm -hmm. but generally there's more than one occasion. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a fine line as to whether, whether I believe in moderation or not, because I don't see like, like again, where it's like, oh, you can have one, but but yeah, but you don't seem to be the guy who's having it once in a while. You seem like this is your normal go-to thing, right? So it's normal to do that. It's normal to disobey yourself. It's normal to give in. It's normal to have trouble with money. It's normal to be in a fucked up relationship. It's normal to not be okay with your body. It's normal to have a fucking, uh, some kind of alcohol or drug problem. It's normal to be a fucking zombie. It's normal to binge watch shows. All of this shit is normal. I don't want to be normal. I'll pass on normal. What are the abnormal people doing? But more importantly, what are they not doing? And it's all that shit that I just fucking mentioned. That's what they're not doing. That's why, you know, at it, it, it 41 or 42, like is it, I'll be getting in better shape. I'll have more tattoos. I'll have more money. I'm not going to deteriorate because I, I see what the fucking trap is. You know what I'm saying? And it takes, you know, sometimes that you have to, um, I, I had to feed myself information from extraordinary people. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I can't listen to someone tell me, ah, it's okay. Fuck you. It's okay. I never bought into the balance, the balance thing. I always said to myself, I, I, was Floyd, did Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather live a balanced life? <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, I don't buy the balance thing. I don't buy the balance thing. I don't want to be balanced. I want to be extraordinary. I want the Lambo. Let's stop lying to ourselves. I want the Lambo. You know, that's 
what I like. Well, I think, I think an advantage you have is being like from an extreme level of self-awareness mm. is that what you, is what you have. And you can say, what, what am I lacking? And you can be honest with yourself mm-hmm. about what it is and what do I need to do to not be this way anymore and be the person I want. And I don't, I don't think most people are like that. Mm. People want to not, people don't want to take accountability for where they've gotten themselves, how much weight they've gained or this and that. They want to say thyroid is a thyroid problem. (laughs) Not everyone does that, but just, yeah, this is an example, but people want to, you know, push their blame somewhere else. And for the few people that can be Mayweather disciplined can overcome that. And you're thinking on a way different level than the average person. And Floyd, and the thing with Floyd is that he was molded into that. He was molded. So for, for, for those of us that didn't come up with an uncle and a, and, and a father that was like aficionados in this thing and just going to, you know, breed you from that small age, it's just like you have to, it's, 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 it's a bit of a paradox. It's like if, if, if you, if you want to have what you want, you can't do what you want. Right. You know, so it's like, once you begin to accept that, then you're going to understand it. Dan Pena, I remember watching Dan Pena. I like raw motherfuckers. I, I need people screaming and yelling. It's weird. It's like, I get like, ah, I feel, I, I don't know why I feel more at ease. When, when somebody's like projecting themselves as happy, I just, it bothers me. When they're like, like passionate, like real Real, gen- yeah. I, I, I need, I need, I need fucking vulgarity. Raw I need, energy. Yeah, right. like <laughs> you know, some people that they, they don't do well with that type of shit. For me, I'm like, ah, oh, like I, when I was with Dan Pena, it was just like, ah, oh, this is yeah, like you know what I'm saying. And he's screaming, "You fucking cunt!" Like he's so angry, yeah. but yet I feel so good around it. I don't know why, but so it's like the vacation, the vacation, the fucking vacation is crazy. The vacation is fucking crazy. It like you we're now at a place where you're, you're renting the life you want. <laughs> you're renting the life you want. Motherfucker. Like, so not only like your 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 happiness is that you got away from your life and you got to live the fantasy. You rented the fantasy for three fucking days. This is or I love when people come back from vacation and they're like back to reality as if like where they were wasn't real. <laughs> That's it's crazy. Well, to me. Yeah, because they know it wasn't real because they didn't make that real. I went mm. on a cruise for um, whew, this one was seven days. I think we went to Miami and it was like five day cruise and a weekend in Miami. I got back. Right, and this was still um, the, the gambling and the drinking and all of this, right? Did you like the cruise? Oh, I love cruises. I love this shit. Don't get me wrong. I'll, I could become a fat fucking drink and gamble and fucking do all of this shit and like what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to lead to a good place. But so I, I come back from this, from this cruise and, uh, and I have anxiety. It was, I, I felt I never experienced oh, it. So, so what happened was is that because I was so mentally removed from the circumstances that I have become conditioned to accept all of the stress that I carry. I I got away from it long enough that I forgot about it. And then when I came back to it, I was thrown deeply into it. Mm. So it just hit me and I was like, and, and, and there was a term for it where it's like vacation anxiety, like post vacation anxiety or something. And I had this and it was because it was just like, yeah, now I am back to my reality. And my reality is so far removed from what the fuck I was just living in mm-hmm. that I, it, it's fucking me up, you, you know? And that's the thing where it's just like, what type of shit is this? What is this? What the fuck? Why, why did I come to accept this? Stop lying to yourself. Do you like that house, that $3 million house? Well, then you should have it. Because we don't just, we're not just attracted to shit that has nothing to do with us. Have what you like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't lie to yourself. Don't pretend, oh, you don't want, that's another thing too. So I'd be in the casino, right? And I see like this fucking, 
I don't know. He dressed like a super, you know, like dirty, like like a, maybe like a dicky suit or something like that. Wads of money out the pocket, the cigar, this fuck. And he's just losing right at the roulette table and just pulls out another wad of money. Disgusting. Yeah, sure. <laughs> disgusting, right? And and, and, and and here he is and just money and money and money and money. I'm saying to myself, this motherfucking guy can get money. I'm broke and this asshole got endless flows of fucking cash to gamble away. I'm not stupid. <laughs> what, like, what the fuck? Why, why should I live this life broke? What am I doing? What am I not doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? These are things that you, 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 you coming, like you got to, you know, like, like, like confront. And now if, if you want these kind of things, I'm not here to be, I'm not an order. I can't be ordinary. I'm just not. I never was. So it's like, I can't walk through this life. Like, Hey, I'm like you, I'm not fucking like you. Right. Like, so it's like, you know, just the general you, whatever, but fucking like, so I have to, you gotta, you gotta fucking get in touch with me. Cause look, maybe some people don't identify with the message. And they're like, I don't want a fucking $3 million house. I don't want the Lamborghini. I don't want the fucking muscles. I don't want, the, I don't want this. We are not all the same. We're not. Like, you can't just fucking throw that shit on somebody and be like, you got to get this. It's like, no. No, some people don't know how. And they don't know how to um, face, face their, you know, shortcomings or their insecurities or something. So they, they want an escape. And sometimes it's just like, they're done work. They just want to watch a movie, right? Or go to the bar and have a drink. And it's just escape. And it's like, I'll get to it later. And it's always- well, Even beyond that, they just might not. There are people that are just like, I like my job. Could be an electrician. Likes getting up, going to work. He likes the security of it. You know, he likes to know that he's got, uh, he's got great benefits. He's earning top pay. He comes home. He 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 doesn't want to be fucking Mr. Muscles. Look at me. Comfortable. Yeah. And he doesn't want his girlfriend to be like when she walks out the house, 70 motherfuckers want to fuck her. He's happy. He's humble. I don't think another person has the right to tell that man he's wrong. He's wired differently than you are. He deserves happiness too, whatever that happiness is for him. We can't be pushing fucking like extreme lifestyles and forms of living on everybody. Not everybody's extreme, you know, but for me, I am, I've always had, like when I, I had an admiration for hip hop and rappers. It's hard to have that same admiration as a mature adult with opinions about shit. You know what I'm saying? Where you, you see these people and you're like, yeah, this is what I want to be. A successful musician inspiring kids to fuck their lives up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what, like, you're, 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 you know, a lot of these people that they're admired, they're, they make, it's hard to admire these people. It's just like, you motherfuckers are like, oh my God, like, you, just everything you're portraying <laughs> is not like, I, it's just not anything I... You mean like the younger rappers versus where you are like now? It could be younger rappers. It could be anybody that's that's making jail, selling drugs, bad, bad money choices. Like all of this stuff yeah. look appealing. It's like, I don't want to be like these... Like I'm, I'm, well, it's, yo it's younger because you don't really see... Even the rappers that we grew up on you know, like Red Man and Method Man, like Wu Tang. If they came up with something now, yeah. it wouldn't be what you're talking about. Not those guys, but then there are also there's there are rappers that are from that from that era. They're extremely successful. They're talking about selling drugs, like currently. Yeah, oh, you're not selling drugs, bro. <laughs> you're not. Like I don't care. Like if you did it at some point or another, cool. You're not doing it today. And like the, like coming from a family of where drugs has like, I, I know what drugs do. Like, so you're not like, I, so, 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 uh, the, but the, the point that I'm making is, is when I was young, that 
the, they were seen for me as like the cool guys. It wasn't about the, 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 the drug talk necessarily, but these were the guys that were above the crowd, whatever. They were cool and it was like style and were badass and it was edgy hip hop, the shit that attracts you. You know, now as an adult, it's like you have to get inspired through a different means. You have to be connected to the art form and the music element and the inspiration of it and the love for writing and these, these kind of things. But to be inspired by like the, the aesthetic, the aesthetic is a bit of a, is a bit of a turnoff, you know? Now there's another aesthetic. It's not just the flashy, you know what I'm saying? But for me, it's weird because I'm like, no, I, I am someone that's drawn to the flashiness, but it seems that all of your flashiness seems to has, it, it, it has to be presented in it, it, it always has to revolve around some kind of low vibrational shit, some negative shit, some street shit, gang banging shit, drug selling shit. And this is low life shit. Like they do an amazing job of making something that everybody wants to get the fuck away from and you make it very appealing. Like it's cool to live in this. Who the fuck wants to lo- live in Newark? <laughs> Not Who me. wants to do that? Like you're making this shit look like it's fucking, it, it, it's, it's, it's glamour. Like it's not glam. Like you're selling, selling crack on the corner is not glamorous. This is like the dirtiest dirt bag shit that you could be involved in. Why are you glorifying that? You're in fucking fashion shows in Paris. The fuck are you like? So there's certain shit that for me, it's like, I, I, yeah, you know, but, but like I said, it, you it's know, not authentic. It's not authentic. And, and, and it's, it's beyond that. It just seems like that's, there's an ill intent behind it. Hmm. And sometimes my, oh yeah, but you know, they like, shut the fuck up. Like they live that. Like, so you're going to like, so you have to, you have to forever, forever exemplify that to the fullest extent because you dabbled in that at some point. I, I'd say this, yo. Do 10 years in jail. This should be the prerequisite. Do the 10 years in jail. Then come out and talk about that shit. Why is it that everybody who spends a significant time in jail doesn't seem to come out rapping about that shit? Because they dealt with the fucking realities behind it. It's the motherfuckers that seem to get lucky, escape the the consequence that come through. And it's like, yeah, we we forever going to fucking glorify this shit. But if, if people are going to make money playing a character, they might just do it like that. Well, except the problem is, is that if it's a movie, it's one thing. But the thing with the movie is, is when the movie is over, the actor admits they're playing a role. <laughs> All right. The artist, the artist never admits he's playing a role. He has to convince the viewer that it's not a role. But if he... If Sylvester Stallone was always Rocky, even after the movie, he was Rocky, he would be in character always, right? So Ghostface Killer is always Ghostface Killer as you know him, unless he's, uh, is his real name Theodore? I don't know. So unless he's out there like doing a, a TED Talk under his government name, he's always going to be that character. Well, I mean, but yeah, but that's, 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 that's like saying Sting is always going to be Sting unless he's, I don't know what his real name is. So how do you differentiate that? Whereas- well, it depends. So, so the, thing that, the thing that makes rap unique, right, uh, from other music, specifically unique, is the fact that it is direct, it is plain English, or whatever language it is, but it's plain, I'm just going to use, for the ex- sake of the example, it's plain English being spoken directly to somebody. Mm-hmm. So it has a different impact, right? Because it's a statement being said. So it's, 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 it's in nature kind of confessional and very matter of fact-ish. I was on them corners at three in the morning selling white. You're saying something directly to me. There's not really room for any much more than the fact that you're confessing this to me. Whereas the movie, I feel, paints a picture 
where do you kind of get what I'm trying to go with it? I do, but I'm also making the argument that we used to see our favorite hip hop artist as like superheroes or comic book characters. Right. And why can't they be the comic book character or super villain that they want to be on their records? They can. And that's, they, and that's they, all I'm yeah, they can. And they do, you know, but why is it, it, it I guess what I'm trying to say is, is, is to what expense? Because I think that we, we underestimate the impact that music before, before there was these motivational guys that I talk about, I was finding that motivation in Jay-Z. Mm. There was thoughts, there was times when shit got tough where I would always think, I would think about that one time. I was like, oh, Jay got away with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When your back's against the wall. The problem is, is that the success of that artist is predicated on what he's saying being real. Because once you go, oh, he's not that, Mm -hmm. all of a sudden his stock drops. That's the problem. So the artist is on a mission to constantly tell, but convince you that he really does this. So if that's his mission, because if, if he's shown to be a fake artist, that's a bad thing. So he's telling you, I really do this. I'm the real deal. These other guys that say they do it, they ain't real. They fake. I really do this. That's the difference. Everybody's in, on, in, in, in a race to go, no, but I really do this. So it goes kind of beyond the whole I'm playing a role thing. Because if they say this ain't real, the stock drops, right? They have to convince you it's real. The actor has to convince you it's real for the, during the movie. You need to feel like, oh, wow, you need to forget he's acting. But when he leaves the movie and it's like, so what are some of the things you did to prepare for that role? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The rapper never comes out of fucking character. Never. Right? So that's, that's the danger. Mm-hmm. Because p- people are taking you for your word. So if they admire you, they're going to try to be like you. Yeah. Well, that also goes to people need to, you know, be inform- make informed decisions for themselves. And, you know, comes, parenting comes into play too, you know, because people are going to believe anything and you need to, you know, just because someone gives bad information, it doesn't make it their fault if you use it the wrong way. Like we also have to be smart about our decisions. Like I grew up listening to, you know, hardcore gangster rap too, but I never thought I would try to sell drugs. What environment you grow up in? Suburbs. Okay. So when, when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with the, the ghetto, right? What, what you're essentially dealing with is you're dealing with, with a community that is without fathers, mothers on welfare or out working or, or working and on welfare, the child ha- doesn't have a father figure. Who is he looking to for, for guidance? He's looking to the streets right. and he's looking to what he knows as heroes. So when he sees on the streets, he sees success as the drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? Then he, he the, the people that he listens to, the, the music's very, very, very fucking powerful because you're, you're, you're feeding yourself something, right? Especially when it's a direct, a, of direct language, direct language, statements, confessions, constantly on replay. So it's, it's, it's literally, it's here. It's here. You, you understand now, even if we're going to go, oh, okay, that is not solely responsible, perhaps, but it ain't helping. Because I'll, I'll be the first to say, no, we, we can't blame the conditions of, of, of poverty and, 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 you know, the shit that comes with growing up in the hood. We can't blame it on rap, but... I mean, it's not (laughs) helping. You're making it look cool. I mean, you know, these kids are singing about the the, the banging and gangbang, like, and I shot him and he's like, you know, I never thought I'd be the old person talking about like, oh, these kids, but, but, but I mean, this is beyond like, you know, rock is the music of Satan, 
which is real, no fucking, no consequences other than people throwing up horns in shows. I mean, it's like hip hop, uh, the drug gang banging hip hop is the real music of Satan. It's fuel. It's fuel. That's what I'm trying to say. It also made a big shift from selling drugs to doing drugs as artists are yeah. bragging about doing drugs now, not yeah. even being dealers. So that's like a whole thing. That's a whole nother thing in itself, influencing people too. Yeah, which makes sense too. Because it's like, who are all these guys selling the drugs too? Oh, here they go. <laughs> <laughs> they started rapping now too. At some point, they the that got to come along, right? There's so much, there's so many drugs being sold. Well, it's like Molly now that they weren't selling back in the '80s or '90s. Yeah, is it? You know, which is fun. it's weird too. It's, it's just bugged out to me because it's just like, Jesus Christ, like. You don't know where this path goes. Really? Really? Like now we got to wait for the four or five years where you go to rehab and now we have to hear that you have clarity. Like you didn't know where this was going. Really? Yeah. What I find interesting is that Jay-Z has, you know, the 99 Problems song about the having the coke in his trunk and, you know, he got off. But as much as he talks about being a hustler or a drug dealer, it's from my knowledge, he's never been arrested. Have you heard of any stories of him being no, arrested? No. So you know he let's so let's see he he sold he sold drugs right, and he got off now. From, you know, you watch Vlad interviews and you watch guys like, fuck's his name, Fe- the, the 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 big drug dealers that were notorious for selling drugs right. They're on Vlad, and you know, and they'll say like when Freeway. you know like. Yeah, freeway, but people attached to Jay-Z. So the guy, what's his name? Um, the Haven, where who, who who was Jay was getting the shit from, right? Mm-hmm. When Vlad asked him, like, was he heavy like that, though? The way he says it, and Haven was like, nah, yo, he was out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's so we embellish, right? Rappers, like, like we exaggerate things. You know, did he do something? Yeah, I'm sure, but to the degree in which it, you listen to a Pusha T album and you're like, oh my God, like, <laughs> dude, you were like kingpin. Jesus Christ, like it's snowing everywhere you are. It's not fucking helpful. You know what I'm saying? To glorify these things. It's just not, I like that just, that's my position. And it's not that I'm I've a great fan of Jay-Z. You know, it's not a personal attacks again. Because Jay, to Jay's credit, Jay comes with more than that, though. That's right. not the whole catalog. Some of these guys, it's nothing but that. Yeah, well, I, w- I only brought it up because he's like one of the m- more unique u- examples of somebody that was in that life that never got caught. Yeah. That'll never happen now. If you want to try to do that, something's going to happen where you're going to get caught up. Probably because of technology and why, like, out of all the opportunities, if that's what you're <laughs> turning to, and that's the annoying thing, like, you motherfuckers keep, and what, what does the rapper tell you? We tell you, I'm not a rapper. The news reporter. Yeah. No, no, no. He says, the rappers, how often they say, I'm not a rapper. I don't Very know. often. They feel like, that's the thing. Jay will say, I thought I told you, cats, I'm not a rapper. Oh. He's not a rapper. He's a drug dealer. So, you know, even Pun, uh, another song, Rest in Peace, Big Pun. Um, it was something where it was just like, uh, he's not a rapper. I forgot how the melody goes. He'll kill you. So it's just like everything is, it, it was a thing where it was like, it's not cool to be a rap. I'm not real. I'm not a rapper. This is just something like, you know, I, I'm I'm just bored at the moment. Yeah, that's the what you gonna do song. What you gonna do when punk comes knocking at your front door? How's it go? He's not a rapper. He ain't a rapper. You. He'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great. It's hilarious. Yeah. But it's you know, all right. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a, a, a statement of shade. I'm just saying it to say that cause the pun was fucking. Oh Jesus Christ! I mean, wow. Like right. But so it's not about that. Like. Whatever Pun was doing, the skill level that he put forward, I think, outshined it, regardless of what he was talking about. But the point is, is not to single him out. It's not to single out Jay. It's not to single anybody. It's to say that that's a common theme in hip hop where 
it's I'm not it's not cool to be a rapper. I'm cool because I'm a successful drug dealer who just happens to rap. Uh, that's weird. Yeah, that's that's what you're getting at because Pusha T is like at minimum 15 years being rich. Yeah, dude, he's still with the drugs. At least 15 years. And if he still push, he has a song, uh, Diet Coke. Yeah. No, the last album is fucking amazing. <laughs> I can't listen to it. It's amazing, though. Yeah. The way he raps, the flows he uses, the beat, it's great A shit. But I can't hear the, the fucking drug talk. Yeah, if he's still doing that after he's been, he, I don't know, he's got to be removed from it or he'd be extremely foolish to be He's rich so and be in selling it. selling drugs. It's not, it's, first of all, why would you even sell the money that you're going to make in that game compared to what you're making that, like, but they, they get like, and, and, and he, he, he's just unapologetic with it. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, I, I've lived like all of this glamour. And that's why like when Drake had that line, like you acting like you sold Coke Fescobar in the 80s. It's like, bro, you really like over like, <laughs> Dude, like, how were you building, like, where were you finding the time that, like, build this successful career in rap with all of this, like, yeah, right? you know, so, 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 so the thing is, is I'm not here to be some kind of fucking aven- avenger of, th- th- there's people far b- b- better suited for that role than me. My shit is like, I'll teach you about crypto. I'm not here to save rap from fucking drug, drug dealer rappers. You know what I'm saying? That it's not my thing. Like I'm more like, if 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 I know some shit, I will offer it to you. So because it, it, if something's beneficial for me in my life, I want to share it with you so it can be beneficial for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and you can prosper. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, you know, the hip hop, you know, I, I want to put forth what I do and, but I, I, yeah, the inspiration to be, but my, my point is the inspiration to be the, to be a rapper and what that encompasses. It's hard, man, especially that version. Like I'm not, you know, not, it's not say that you have to aspire to be the drug dealer rapper. But it's you, weird. You have to imagine your own version of what a rapper it like the aesthetic. Like when I imagine the aesthetic for me, it's something where it's just like, oh shit, I could see like the dark room, like it's a dark boom and the weights are being lifted and tattooed. Like there's different things that come to my mind when I imagine marketing myself and presenting myself in an image that's cool. You know. I I imagine it's a different mentality that I don't uh, I'm not aware of when you're at a level that you can influence so many people mm-hmm. and you have all the money you need and things like that. I don't know if they would think morally like we're thinking about it. Mm-hmm. They may have like an, a reason, like a an, a response for it, but I just I think it's a whole nother. Like thing where they're just like, it's entertainment. I'm going to take it to the max. I'm going to make my Scarface movie of an album. I just don't see why. I, I, I just don't, the fast, like, I don't know. And there's different versions of it where it's just like, there's some that rap about it, but you're not getting the idea of just this over glorification. I like to listen to Benny the Butcher. It's drug talk, but it's it's not like, it, it 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 just feels more like somebody telling this story, you know. Even though there there is the element of glorification, but there there it just feels more like it just feels more real and more pure, you know. And then what's the push of tea uh, come off to you as like just something that's not authentic? Everything is everything seems to be a statement of how much he has benefited. And this luxurious life that he lives mm. from drug selling. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Where when I listen to Benny, it seems to be more of a statement of, I don't feel like I should go out and sell drugs after listening to a Benny the Butcher album. 
It don't feel like it's going to be that smooth and nice of a ride. Like he's letting you know what his experience was, but he's not saying like, this is the life. It's not, it doesn't feel appealing. It's not like, I don't feel like, yeah, let me go get into this now. That's not (laughs) the like impression I get. If I listen to Pusha T, it's like, damn, if I don't start selling drugs right now, life's going to be shit. (laughs) This motherfucker seems to be living it. Like he's still on, like, that's your only option. Or just like, look at how much benefit it comes with. Like that's, you know, and it's not, it's not, it's not a personal thing. It, it, it doesn't matter. It's not, a, it's not a, like it's about push a T it's remove push a T, but not like it, whoever's doing it, not against him personally. It's, but it's more so the product the artist is, is putting forth, you know what I'm saying? And the impact that has now are the kids in the ghetto listening to the, the push a T album? Probably not. They're more listening to the drill shit, which fuck, I would maybe even worse. Cause the drill shit is just like they're making songs about killing each other. Like that's the drill music. Yeah. You make the song about who you're going to kill and then you go kill the rapper. Or you kill the rapper, then you make a song about it. Like that, <laughs> that's drill music. I remember- uh, Like they're really doing that, by the way. Like they kill the op and then they make the song about it. Yeah, and they're ratting on themselves. Yeah, like that's the concept of drill. Like you go do the drill uh, and then you make the music. Oh, so it's not just the sound. It's like an actual like concept that you do. Yeah, so it has a sound, but that's what it's based in. Okay, so that's part of it too, yeah. like, like the events that occur. Yeah, and so they started going to jail because they started talking about these things. But do you see what the glorification of things can do? It seems like glamorous. You see the crip, the, oh, he, oh, he's a crip and he's got like however many gold chains and he's got this many groupies and he's got this, he's got this. So it makes gangbanging look like oh shit, if I could just, if I get myself, if I could be a a part of a gang and I could rap and I could sell drugs, life's going to be fucking wonderful. And I can get into beef. So now you have the element of I'm a warrior and it it, it encompasses all of these. I understand that on a deeper level, I understand the appeal, but it's, 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 it's traits that would otherwise be good just presented in a, in, in, you want to be brave. Okay. So now you're going to, bang on the, on the op. You want to be successful. So now you're going to sell the drugs. You want to be, you, you understand what I'm saying? Like the, the, the traits inspiring the behavior. Well, I understand, but it's, it's, it's in the wrong place. Mm-hmm. It's like the, the morals and codes aren't there anymore. Whereas like things are opposite now where they, things were not cool back then in the nineties that they're doing now. Like you don't, you don't rat on yourself. If you're a, if you're a, a drug dealer or you were involved in any type of criminal activity, you don't hint towards it. You don't like, you know, right. I mean? like very common sense things that people just don't, don't abide by. So I don't know if that's like influence or it's just a generational well, you thing know, because beyond music, there's yeah. things that people do that are, that we never used to do that were just not cool back then. You know, the interesting thing about artistry is I think that the rappers were talking about it back then, but they were so much better at rapping that it wasn't so obvious. Yeah. It's very hard to, it's not an easy thing to memorize the Reasonable Doubt album. It's very technical writing and it's very unorthodox. Um, Certain, you know, singles, you know, a little easier, of course, but, you know, even if you listen to, AZ and Nas visualizing the realism of life and actuality. Fuck who's the bad. Like this is like automatically the average, like it's not run up and not boom, boom, stop. Boom, boom. Then you get shot. I know the gut. Like right, right. there, you know what I'm saying? It's like back. It's like wild style where you're trying to interpret what the letters are versus like, again, <laughs> I shot you on <laughs> this day. Yeah, yeah. Ha ha. <laughs> I'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> like, yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's interesting you're saying that earlier rap influenced this level of behavior, which is kind of crazy. You said something in one of your uh, legend has it. Uh, you're talking about like the complexity in lyricism and how you were just like trying to dive like deep, deep into it and uh, rap 
in very unique, unorthodox ways. But did you also feel that way about like the message that you were giving out? Because you definitely have concept songs. You 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 talk about a wide variety of different kind of things. But was that always like how, how did you always approach like I want people to know this? Like you just wanted. I, I'm guessing like here's the real things that happen in life. Here's the things that I experienced and I'm going to make a song about it. Mm-hmm. And you can, un- you can learn or understand like this thing. Like in some of the works I plan to put out will be more, um, explaining more so that I like explaining more like the background, mm-hmm. like my life story. Um, to be honest with you, I just think that I, I was one of those artists that I think would have benefited from uh, artist development, from having somebody who could be like, okay, look, like, you got this going, you got, like, you got all of this stuff, like, look, th- 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 this got to be, like, we got to make a cohesive fucking package here. You know what I'm saying? Because you're, like, all over the fucking place, you know? And somebody that would to teach me where it would just be, like, your skill is not really what sells. The skill is not what sells. The skill could, it helps, but it's generally, um, it's an image. What are we selling? How are we packaging you? You gotta be something more or some kind of, you know, M, M had the thing, holy fuck, I can't believe this dude is white. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, it wouldn't be, I can't believe this dude is white if he didn't have the skill. It's mad white rappers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They cared M was white because he was that fucking extraordinary. So you have to have that thing attached to it. Um, But, you know, would take away the white factor? Ah. I don't know. I don't think it would have been, he would have been the pop sensation no, that he was. He connected with like middle America because he was this angry white teen that hated his mom mm-hmm. and everybody could relate to that. Like yeah. almost every white person can relate to that. Yeah. But it, you know, and, and it's, and, and, and those are the things that speak on the broader, on the broader scale. Like they, um, because if it, if it was a, like, sorry to cut you yeah, off. Yeah, that's fine. If it was um, a black rapper that was talking about how he's like, you know, all the shit he wants to do with his B. mom. B. Hobson. To his mom. <laughs> B. Hobson. Hobson was is just like a, was like a black version of M. But, but, but you see where M got and where Hobson got. Yeah, but Hobson, I don't feel, I don't think Hobson would have worked in 2000, 2001. Yeah, well, it, it just depends, like, to what degree, like, and that's what I'm saying, where it's just, like, you see where skill can get you. There's a lot of yeah. dudes with skill. I mean, like, the kid Token, yeah. very skilled. Uh, Hobson, very skilled. Like, there's this kid, I think his name is Guam. There's all of these technical spitter guys. That Afro. Are, Afro. There's, there's so many, dude. There's a whole... <laughs> it's like a separate culture, yeah. right? I think you could call it hip hop, right? <laughs> as opposed to what we normally refer to as hip hop, which is I'm um, a drug dealer they, they, that'll kill you, right? But there's a whole culture, but that, that, what's the story? How do we package that? What are we selling to these people? Right. So that's that's the thing where it's just like, it, it, sometimes an artist can't look at themselves from it's it's hard because that's why you have people that are in marketing you have people that are in that can see from the outside and then understand like how are we going to uh how are we going to pr- package this in a presentable way that it that somebody will buy cuz you can't sell like to sell skill you ain't selling now. Like it's not, first of all, it's not even exciting anymore. Motherfucker's been nice for mad long. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, oh, he's good. Wow. You know how many people are fucking extraordinary at rapping? Right. So it's it, it's got to be more than that. Right? Now it could be the music, like the song touched them and connected on a deeper level. But that's not the packaging like being presented. Then 
where what, what I wonder about is, is are we even in a state anymore of, is the game in a place of selling a package to a person anymore? I'm not so sure it is. I mean, you have, you have things like Instagram where it's just like you're let into the artist everyday life. Mm. Right. So it's like how much of a package are they sell? Like, it's weird. Like there's, I don't know if there's the mystique of I, people are let in to the everyday, but I guess if the artist is living like a star and they're letting people into that everyday existence, then I suppose you're selling them that. I don't know. It's tricky. It's hard to say, you know, they went from albums to singles to Instagram clips. I don't know where it, the money is like, you just have to become a personality. It seems that way. It's strange to know where to put these things. That's why for me, when it comes to releasing stuff, it's just like, damn, like, where do I, like, like you have to take a step back and you go like, okay, how, how do you, how do I do this now? Like, how do you put stuff out? Like NFTs are a big thing, right? But NFTs run on Ethereum, okay? or they're being minted, they're using Ethereum to mint them. Ethereum is fucking horrible, right? People are not aware of any, like Ethereum, Ethereum has to go through five more upgrades before it becomes like usable in a way that's not, like if you, what it cost for you to make a transaction on Ethereum is out of control crazy. Your gas price might cost as much as your fucking transaction. Right. So you want to send a hundred dollars, it might cost you fifty to do it. You know? So it's like that's called broke. That's called this doesn't work yet. Nobody cares though. This is all brand recognition. So Ethereum's still going to blow and make a lot of money, but it's not because it's good tech. You know, it has Five phases once in the, but yeah, it's got to go from proof of work to proof of stake. And then there's some other phases. Now there's other cryptos that are actually at that level that Ethereum is trying to get to. So when we look at XRP, right, they're introducing smart contracts to XRP. I would like to make NFTs on XRP. Mm. And then I would sell those because now that it's not going to cost the fucking, the buyer an arm and a leg. It's going to cost a fraction of a penny. And have BitBoy explain it. <laughs> he would. So, um, so what do you think is the future of rap? Because like the, where it's at, the, where it's come to now is like unlistenable in my opinion. Like the, the mumbling mm. and all that stuff. And uh, it's just, it's not listenable. I wonder if it's going to cycle back to real. Well, actually, did you hear the Les Kendrick album? No. Phenomenal. Mm. Phenomenal. Um, I think that artistically, I think, I think the future of rap has to do with the future of, you know, I think that there's, everything is going to be divided as it should be. I think for the kids that are essentially, they didn't get to, to be ravers when they were young, right? That are living out like their raver days through hip hop. They're dyeing their hair, they're getting tattoos, they're dressing like girls, they're doing all of this stuff. There's going to be the artist for them. Yeah. And I think for the mature audience, we're going to have our Kendricks, our homeboy Sandman's, Lupe Fiasco, J. Cole, Aesop, if I, if I didn't say him, but y y you know the list. Yeah. We'll have those people. Um, and I think that's what it's going to be. I think it's just going to be different segments. You know? Um, yeah. I mean, when I asked you that, I also, at the same time, I thought that some of the stuff we love and the artists that are um, just real, real lyricists have always been here. They've never gone away. Yeah. I think what I originally was thinking of was how it's fed to us and presented to us and, if we're on Instagram or on the, I don't know, news or Apple Music or Spotify, we're only going to see the stuff that's making businesses money, which makes us think that there's only those like little Uzi Vert type of rappers. 
when I at the same time realized like no all the good shit's still here we just yeah. gotta we just gotta find it and there's enough for everybody to have their space yeah I think we gotta realize that we're 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 old men like I don't feel old but 40s like essentially like middle aged so it's like you know, it's it's basically, it's like, what are the kids going to be listening to next? And, uh, you know, if they're not, if they're, <laughs> uh, if they're drawing inspiration from what these kids are doing, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's going to be singing. <laughs> like, it, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be all melody. <laughs> like, that's, that's the future of. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Leave some comments, which topics you like the most, and um, if there's any other things that you'd like us to uh, chat about next time. Peace.